Hi, welcome to the Sunday Evening Bible Study with the Berea Church of Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you've had a great day. No better way of finishing it off than through a study of God's Word. I hope that we'll say a few things today that will be of encouragement to you and will kind of set the tone for the week as we get out into the work week. So thanks for tuning in. I hope this will be a blessing. Our scripture reading tonight comes from the Sermon on the Mount as we continue our series on the Sermon on the Mount. We'll begin with verse 13 of Matthew chapter 5. Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father who is in heaven. You know, salt is fantastic. In fact, it's an essential part of our bodies. In fact, uh, I... Uh, did a little research and found out that, you know, the human body has about four ounces of salt in it. Now, I like Morton sea salt. That's what I season food with. And this is a 4.4 ounce bottle of seasoned salt, uh, sea salt, if you will. Uh, the human body has this much salt in it right now at, or at any given time. That's a pretty significant amount of salt circulating and being used by our body. In fact, it's salt that helps us heal. In fact, years ago when Napoleon was in battle, many of his men died because they lacked salt in their diet and uh, they couldn't get things to coagulate. Salt is very important for things like that. Salt is an important preservative. I know that uh, many people years ago, before there was a lot of refrigeration, would uh, pack meat in salt and put it in uh, a place of low temperature and just let the, the meat set in the salt and the salt would preserve it and keep it from degrading quickly. Salt is also awesome for taste. I love the taste of salt. In fact, there are very few foods that I eat that I don't like a little bit of salt on. I can't have too much, you know, we don't wanna spike the old blood pressure, but uh, I like salt on a baked potato. We had a baked potato here at lunch today and uh, I gotta have a little bit of salt on it. I like a little bit of salt on my meat, a little salt in my soup, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But uh, it's just, it is a wonderful as it accents the flavor of whatever it is you're eating. And as we see in scripture tonight, Christians are that seasoning, they're that preservative for the world. It just takes a little bit to make a huge difference. Now, as far as the world is concerned, Christians are greatly outnumbered. If you think about there being 7 billion people on our planet today, there's not 7 billion Christians in the world today. But Christians and their influence is known worldwide, even though they're few in number compared to the, the population of the world in general. Christians make a powerful difference. In fact, salt was something that was so revered and so valued that uh, it was taken as payment many years ago. Roman soldiers each received uh, a portion of salt uh, on a regular basis, a part of their pay. Uh, Shakespeare often referred to salt in some of his plays and literature. It was that part, common part of society and a very valuable part of society. And I suggest to you today that it's an important part of our work today as Christians, our life today as Christians, that we need to provide that extra seasoning to the world. Think about what the world would be like if there were no Christians. How dynamically different for the worse the world would be if Christians didn't exist at all. So I'm grateful that through Jesus, not only have we been saved from our sins, not only has he added us to his church, but collectively we make a powerful influence for good. And how about light? You know, light can be very powerful. Even very low embers of light radiate and provide uh, a source of illumination. You can go into a gymnasium. I used to coach uh, basketball. 
and you can go into a gym that's completely dark, no light on it whatsoever, and you can light one match, and that one match can be seen anywhere in the gymnasium. Just that one little touch, a little tongue of fire, if you will, can be seen anywhere in the gym, covering uh, hundreds of feet. Just that one little light. And I want you to know that you are salt if you're in Jesus. You are light if you are in Jesus. And it's essential. It's essential that we make a difference in our world today. There are a lot of people that may never ever want to have a Bible study with us. There are a lot of people that may never tune into a broadcast like this. There are people that will never read the Bible. But most people know somebody that's a Christian. Most people can see Christ lived out on a daily basis by the life that somebody else lives in Jesus' name. Now, Paul reminds us in Ephesians chapter 4 that sometimes we fail as Christians. Sometimes we forget how essential it is to be like Christ. And if we fail, what a, what a, a large degree of damage can be done for the cause of Christ. That there are people that may never ever want to come to Christ because someone let them down or somebody disappointed them or somebody hurt them or maybe even somebody in some way defrauded them or cheated them or, or um, used vulgarity against them or did any number of things in a moment of weakness. And some people never get over that. But it's important that we do own it, that we're accountable for times in our lives when we don't live in accordance with God's will, that we fall short of his glory. So I want to read a passage that correlates with what Jesus was saying with the Sermon on the Mount. It's found over in Ephesians chapter 4, and he emphasizes it greatly, how much that being the salt and being the line and being authentic as Christians is essential. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. So listen carefully what Paul has to say along the same vein. Chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 17. So I tell you this, and insist on it in the Lord, that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding, and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality, so as to indulge in every kind of impurity with a continual lust for more. Can you not see that in our world today? How that people have just given over to the flesh, that whatever floats their boat, whatever makes them happy, whatever satisfies the, the, the sins of the flesh, that's what they want. We can see that readily, but yet we are still to be authentic, consistent Christians in the way that we live. He says in verse 20, You, however, did not come to know Christ that way. Surely you have heard of him and were taught in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood, and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. Do not let the devil have a foothold. He who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his hands, that he may have something to share with those in need. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building up others according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you have been sealed for the day of redemption. Listen to this. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as Christ, God forgave you. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. Now, it's so easy as we live life on a daily basis to be heavily influenced by those around us. 
maybe you can see it in, in language. So oftentimes in the workplace, we hear a lot of crude and, and vulgar language. We hear a lot of four-letter words. And it is so easy when you hear that day in and day out to allow that to infiltrate your mind. And subconsciously, you may use improper language and not even think about it. But Paul says, remember, your talk is important. Don't let anything unwholesome come from your mouth. Then he talks to us about another sticky point in our lives, how we deal with anger. And we all get angry. And we've all kind of missed the mark from time to time. We've all said some things that we shouldn't have said when we got angry or, or did some things that we shouldn't have done in anger. In fact, there are people today who uh, have suffered tremendous consequence because their anger wasn't in check. It just seems like people are easily in a rage today, that there are a lot of people just so angry that it doesn't take anything to set them off. Um, I know road rage is a real problem today. Uh, people get so angry and, and somebody cuts them off or somebody's tailgating and they'll slam on their brakes intentionally trying to, to cause a problem. They get rear-ended and then next thing you know, they're outside of their vehicles having a fight or somebody cuts somebody off in traffic and the next thing you know, you hear gunfire. It's crazy how easily people are consumed in rage or in anger. And folks, we can't be like that as Christians. We have to be compassionate, willing to go the second mile, be willing to realize what is of importance and what really doesn't really matter so that we're not consumed by our selfishness and our selfish thoughts and ideas. It's all about us, that we need to let people out in traffic, that we need to let people go in as we open the door for them. So many people, you can see them, uh, maybe they're going to a restaurant, they're trying to get in line, and they're actually racing people to get in the door and, and jump in front of somebody. You'll see people cut in line in front of other people. Um, just so many ways in which people try to elevate themselves of importance that uh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to wait on anybody. You know, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. you got to look out for yourself. And those attributes and those qualities are tearing our world apart. But God calls us to being the salt of the earth, to be someone who's always got something positive to say, always is someone who's very forgiving, doesn't hold grudges, always thinks the best of someone else. You know, you'll hear about somebody say, like, do you know so-and-so? And then somebody else will say, oh, yeah, well, let me tell you about so-and-so. And, and they'll throw out all the dirty laundry that they've got on them. Or even the dirty laundry that supposedly might be true. And it might not have even a kernel of truth to it. But they'll degrade somebody just because maybe on a whim they just don't like somebody. And before you know it, people just jump on the bandwagon. And they ridicule and scorn and, and talk badly and gossip and slander people. How refreshing is it? When somebody says, do you know so-and-so? Oh, do I know so-and-so? Absolutely. They are so kind. They are so great. And you could go into the positive things that you're aware of about their life. Maybe they're an excellent worker, a hard worker, always here on time, always willing to jump in and help somebody if they have a need, um, always volunteering to let somebody have a day off if they need to, or cover somebody's shift, or, or any number of things. They're constantly giving, constantly loving, constantly doing things to try to make things better on everybody else. That is so dynamically different than the world we live in, where somebody is, is often so selfish and so self-centered, could care less about anybody else. How refreshing it is to think about the impact of Christians on our world today. Now, this morning, in this morning's worship, we talked about how difficult life is right now, how easily it is to be discouraged and, and to be kind of bummed and, and to kind of be just upset about the course of human events lately in our, not just in our world, not just the COVID, but we've just had a lot going on. And yet we, through the hope that we have in Christ, we just have a little bit better and a different perspective about life. And we have a different perspective and a value of other people. We're all made in the image of God. Intrinsically, we all have value. It doesn't matter how much money we have or we don't have. It doesn't matter where we live. It doesn't matter who our relatives are. 
We have value because we're made by God in the image of God, and we're all given a soul that is going to live forever. I don't know if you're like me, but uh, I've thought a lot about what can you take with you in the next life? What can you take with you to heaven? Obviously, we, we can't take our earthly possessions. I know one wealthy man one time uh, had instructed his lawyer that at his death, that he wanted the sum total of all of his finances made out to him in a check. And he had him tuck the check in the envelope and put it inside the casket with him. So when he got to the other side, he'd have his money with him. <laughs> well, it doesn't, it doesn't quite work like that. In fact, I'm persuaded that there's only two things we take with us. Our memory of life here on the earth and other people. How powerful and how awesome would it be to get to heaven one day and to meet someone that you influenced for Christ. Maybe you led them to Christ. Maybe you helped them become Christians. Or maybe you uh, invited them to church and, and uh, they ended up be, becoming a Christian and maybe their whole family came to Christ. And it's all because of that one invitation, that one moment where you decided, hey, just see what they say. It can't hurt. Not only did it not hurt, what a difference it made. I, uh, I remember when my folks lived in Ozark, Missouri. It was um, a little town just outside of Springfield, Missouri. And I'm, I've mentioned this before. But uh, at one time I lived in Virginia, just about an hour and a half, two hours from the ocean. And I would drive all the way home to Ozark, Missouri. It's a long way. And there was a good-sized hill that I would top. And as I topped the hill and would start down uh, over the crest of the hill, the lights of this little old town would just pop, and all of a sudden, uh, you knew you were home. Well, folks, I want to tell you that there's a lot of darkness in our world. There's a lot of reasons for people to be down and out, especially those that don't know Christ. What a powerful thing it is to see people every day who shine like lights, who are catalysts for change, who, accents, who give an accent, a taste, a flavoring to life like no one else, the life of a Christian. And I want to encourage you as you start this new week, whether you're going to school, whether you're going to work, whether you're going to see your neighbors, whether you're going to go to the grocery store or the gas station, wherever you go, be cognizant of and put in the forefront of your mind, I want to be a great example. I want to be salt. I want to be light because it's vital. It's vital for our physical bodies. It's vital for our spiritual lives. And it is essential in carrying the gospel to others that we're salt and that we're light. Will you bow as we pray? Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for Jesus that he came to this earth and lived the perfect life and but not only the life of his perfection, but the life of his example, that we can see how Jesus talked with people and loved people and healed people and reached out to people and was a friend to those that maybe no one else would be a friend to, that he would always value people and spent time with everyone regardless of who they are. God, help us to be like that. Help us to value people no matter who they are. And that we might always be cognizant of our ability to influence people for Jesus. That we might somehow, some way, lead people to him. We thank you, Father, for your word tonight as it has spoken to our hearts. That it will be in our forefront of our minds. And that we'll be changed by it. And that in so doing, we'll have the capacity and the ability to change our little corner of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I hope you have a great week. We'll look forward to Wednesday evening with our online Bible study. Um, if you tuned in this morning or you came to worship, you know that Brother Lee was here. So we're looking forward to Lee. We're so grateful he and Cindy and Tucker are, are back on their feet and, and were able to worship with us this morning. And Lee will have our class, Lord willing, on Wednesday night. And we certainly look forward to that. He is a great teacher of God's Word. Well, until next time, may God richly bless you and yours. Be the salt, be the light, make a difference. Have a great, great week.